Hey, Chicago, Lollapalooza runs on Duncan, and V96 has an opportunity for you to be part of an exclusive private pre lala performance. Head over to Duncan at 5615 South Harlem Avenue in Chicago on July 25th from 1 to 2 p.m. for your chance to win passes to a private performance featuring Jordy and the Duncan Lounge at the V96 Studios. And one winner will walk away with a pair of single day tickets to Lala. More details at V96.com. Lollapalooza runs on Duncan. Would you rather have wireless on the most reliable network nationwide or unlimited with 5G for $30 a month per line? You don't have to choose with Xfinity Mobile. Wireless so good it keeps one-upping itself. Most reliable based on Root's metric U.S. report. Results vary, not an endorsement. $30 per month per line when you get four lines. We just had an interesting comment on the New York Mets. And so as scheduled, we're going to have a conversation with someone who covers the New York Mets for Newsday. And I'm going to start off by referencing our prior call, but let me uh, do the formalities first. Tim, how are you, man? I am excellent, thanks. How are you? I have not a complaint in the world. Thank you so much. I I know you're getting ready for the game. New York Mets trying to beat up on the Padres, I hope. Uh, But I do want to ask you this question. One of our callers right before the break is just typically disgruntled fan. He's like, I can't stand Lindor. Uh, Did you see him (laughs) in? Did you see Jimenez at the All-Star game? What are your thoughts and observations for Lindor? And what is it going to take for this guy to get into the good graces of of just Met fans? Well, it's going to be hard to win over 100% of Mets fans. I think, you know, when he he came in the blockbuster trade that he came in, and then almost immediately, you know, before the season started, signed the $341 million contract, all of a sudden – for his 11 years that he's under contract with the Mets, that number will always be attached to him. And it's kind of like a, a little bit of an A-Rod situation with the Yankees. A-Rod never totally won over Yankees fans, even before the steroid stuff, before um, it really all fell apart at the end, because he had that number attached to him. And no level of production was enough to win over some fans. Um, in the case of Lindor, I think it's pretty reasonable to say, after an offseason in which a whole bunch of top-end shortstop signed contracts that Lindor would not have received $341 million had he gone to free agency. That said, that's what the Mets gave him. So the perception is and probably maybe always will be that he is overpaid. Um, You know, he's having a really solid season now. He's got his usual good defense. His offense is much improved over last year. So this is kind of who Francisco Lindor is. This is what the Mets signed up for if if that's not enough for some for some fans then uh so it goes i guess oh damn that baseball well i I would say he that that would make him feel sad but he can always wipe his tears with his money i guess right yeah well put it's it's likely tim healy is joining us here from newsday the new york mets have been uh active over the past 24 hours on, on the trade market, obviously bringing in Daniel Vogelbach from Pittsburgh to be a platoon hitter. They're trying to cement their catching situation with Michael Perez. We know that Nito is going to be available to play today. But what other moves do you see taking place between now and even through August 2nd? Well, with Daniel Vogelbach in the fold, their top need, their top remaining need is the bullpen. They sort of robbed from that area and Colin Holderman to acquire Daniel Vogelbach, um, which is, you know, a pretty significant cost, really. Um, So they're going to need to add another, at least another back-end reliever. Wouldn't surprise me if there are two of them, maybe a mix in a left-hander, because Joely Rodriguez hasn't exactly inspired confidence this season. Um, So the bullpen is still in need, and I'm sure the Mets will always be keeping an eye out for another bat. Um, they upgraded from the left side with Vogelbach. They still have J.D. Davis as their primary left-handed hitter, D.H. So we'll see if they try to upgrade there. Well, Tim, correct me. Right, right, right-handed for, for J.D. Davis against left. My bad. Yes, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here. In bringing in Vogelbach and knowing that Davis and, and Vogelbach are now going to split at bats, wouldn't you say that it's almost – going to be curtains for Dom Smith? Isn't he going to be used to potentially flip somebody else into that bullpen? Yeah, I think if the Mets can find a home for him or if they find a a new team for him in a trade that 
they deem worthwhile, then, yeah, Dominic Smith can absolutely be had. That said, his trade value has got to be very low right now between the uh, poor season and now the injury. So, you know, I'm not sure that he's going to get moved in the next week and a half before the trade deadline. Um, But, you know, he can always be sent to the minors, like we saw early in the season. So uh, Dominic Smith essentially got replaced offensively by Daniel Vogelbach. But uh, that doesn't mean that he's necessarily gone from the organization imminently. Tim Healy is here with us, the JR Sport Brief Show on the fan. When we look at the trade deadline and you talk about uh, a potential bats that can can come in for the New York Mets, obviously there's a big old pie in the sky. His name is Juan Soto. <laughs> yep. And, and, and then there, there might be someone who might be more reasonable. He's on the same team. Nobody talks about him. And that's that's Josh Bell. And so yeah. to, to, to what degree or what level do you believe the New York Mets will add another bat? You know, I, I think because they added Daniel Vogelbach relatively early, you know, with a week and a half to go before the trade deadline, that puts them in a position of power for the next week and a half. They don't need to add another bat. They aren't desperate to add another bat. But if they find the right situation, then, yeah, they can absolutely strike. Don't forget, too, that the Mets are a team that is very much trying to build a farm system that right now is kind of mediocre. They'd rather not trade their top, you know, four, five, maybe six prospects. Um, They learned the hard way last year when they traded Pete Crow Armstrong to the Cubs while he was injured, and now he's a great prospect again. So, you know, those trades often come back to bite teams. So they don't need to add another bat, but if they can find something that they think fits at a cost that is tolerable, then it wouldn't surprise me at all to see them jump on that. This time of year, you know, I I, kind of consider it silly season because Hmm. you'll hear all sorts of reports and rumors about the Mets or any given team really interested in this player or that player or they've scouted so-and-so and – You know, there are many, many conversations that go on this time of year. And some of those ultimately yield a trade, and some of them wither away to nothing. Some of them get revisited in the offseason. So a lot is going to be said about the Mets until between now and August 2nd. And, uh, you know, I, I expect another one or two moves. Okay. Well, Tim, we've talked about the bats. You you talked about the bullpen. And we know uh, the the strength and could be a strength has been could been could be is obviously the starting rotation. Uh, Max Scher- Max Scherzer's back had a, a decent outing last night. You Darvish just happened to pitch a little bit better, and we know in the case of Degrom, it's one more rehab start. Hopefully, no setbacks or soreness. What is the timeline looking like for him? Do we have to wait a week and a half? And and, and what will be the plan? to re-ingratiate him into the starting rotation? It's, it's going to be soon, one way or another. The Mets hope that this is going to be his last minor league start. The Mets haven't said when exactly that's going to be, but you can pencil him in for Tuesday or Wednesday, and then that would line him up to return during the, next, the, the Mets' next road trip, which it takes them to Miami next weekend, and then Washington, D.C. to play the Nationals at the beginning of August. And that's where they'll be for the trade deadline. So I expect to Grom back right before or right after the trade deadline. Okay. Well, Tim, I appreciate you taking the time. Final question here for you. Uh, we got a lot of Met fans who have called up, and it seems like they, they have PTSD. Like they're waiting, <laughs> they're waiting on things to fall apart. Uh, the Atlanta Braves are breathing down their necks a game and a half right now. What do you foresee for the, the rest of the season? I mean, we got, we got everybody and their mother, 12 teams getting into the postseason. What does the yeah. outlook look like? Because of the expanded postseason field, I would be absolutely floored if the Mets totally collapsed and missed the postseason altogether. That said, because of the new playoff arrangement, winning the division matters a lot. And the Mets have their work cut out for them. The Braves have narrowed the deficit to one and a half games, which, as we sit here on July 23rd, one and a half games is basically nothing, especially when those two teams are going to play each other 12 more times between now and the end of the season. So it's 
going to be a dogfight. The Mets, the, the Mets by no means have the division locked up. Um, I'm, I can't confidently say that the Mets are even uh, the best team in the division, even though their record, you know, mar- marginally says they, they are a little bit at this point. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun uh, and a lot of stress, I'm sure. Uh, but it, e- either way, I'm looking forward to seeing how it all folds out. No doubt about it. Yeah, I think stress might be the, the key word yeah. there. But Tim, I appreciate you taking the time. Where can people keep up with you and all your work at Newsday? Newsday.com slash Mets. And then, of course, on Twitter at Tim B as in boy, Healy, H-E-A-L-E-Y. Well, thank you so much, Tim. Appreciate you. Talk soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, Chicago, Lollapalooza runs on Duncan, and V96 has an opportunity for you to be part of an exclusive private pre lala performance. Head over to Duncan at 500 West Roosevelt Road in Chicago on July 25th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. for your chance to win passes to a private performance featuring Ian Dore at the Duncan Lounge at the V96 Studios. And one winner will walk away with a pair of single-day tickets to Lala. More details at V96.com. Lollapalooza runs on Duncan. Mayor Anthony Copeland and the City of East Chicago present Fusic Fest, a fusion of food, fun, and music on August 6th and 7th at Jarris Park Beach in East Chicago, Indiana, featuring Def Jam, Rap Star, Jeezy, and Latin sensation Elvis Crespo on Saturday, and Quisillos and Regalo Caro on Sunday. Free admission, parking $20. Sponsored by Randall Metals, Ameristar Casino and Hotel, Tredebi, Cleveland Cliffs, BP, Hard Rock Casino, Northern Indiana. Every search you make, every click you take, they'll be watching you. Are you tired of being tracked online? There's a simple solution. DuckDuckGo. It's an all-in-one privacy app with a built-in private search engine, web browser, one-click data clearing, email protection, and more. All for free. Download the app today and get the most comprehensive privacy protection with the push of a button. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. An office party resulting in a half-million-dollar lawsuit. Human remains on display in a hotel ballroom. Just two examples of the stories we'll be digging into on our new podcast, Something Offbeat. I'm your host.